First of all, I didn't look at it as a risk. I looked at it as an obligation because I took an oath. My oath of office was to protect and defend the Constitution, and this was a violation under the Fourth Amendment and the First Amendment of the Constitution of the Rights of U.S. Citizens. I mean, a lot of people don't understand that the bulk acquisition of data on individuals started with U.S. citizens. That's why I started objecting immediately, and that's why I left NSA, because I couldn't uh, be a party to that. I'm glad that there has been this tradition over 12 years of selecting somebody uh, to be honored for truth-telling and integrity. There's a lot of challenges in this field of producing accurate and honest intelligence for policymaking. Uh, it's more than challenging. It is actually, uh, it's just rife with uh, people who want to use, you know, facts for their own agenda. You know, the good news is that there are people. Uh, oftentimes you, you kind of become hopeless and you say, well, the whole government is corrupt and the, the CIA and the FBI and, and the so-called war on terrorism, uh, including the UK and other countries, and everything's corrupt and there's nothing we can do. But then you see that there are people internally that have spotted problems and you see good people standing up to it. Um, the, the downside is we, there doesn't seem to have been a tipping point yet where we can get enough information out to the public about the truth of what's going on that that public pressure then can make a difference. When I first the IA, I was introduced to a, 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 a sort of set phrase in the language uh, as it was purported by the leadership which was that we had an obligation, all intelligence officers, to speak truth to power. The idea being that even if there's great risk, even if it's politically unhelpful for you or your career, we have a civic duty when we see something wrong, when we see things going off the rail, when we see unlawful programs begin, to say something about it. When our intelligence points to a different conclusion than the policies of, of high officials might prefer, we have to stand up and say something about that. I think uh, speaking for myself, but also uh, representing clients like Bill Binney and Edward Snowden and Thomas Drake, when you go to work for the U.S. government, you take an oath not to the president not to your agency, um, not to any boss. You take an oath to uphold and defend the United States Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. And people who take that oath seriously privilege their obligation to the Constitution above any kind of loyalty to anybody else. I think the US tries to make it look like whistleblowers are being disloyal to the government when in fact it's quite the opposite. It's the whistleblowers who are showing the utmost loyalty to the document upon which our nation was founded. Uh, <clears throat> the point is, if, if you say, well, if you, have, uh, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear, right? That's a straight quote from Joseph Goebbels. It's also totally irrelevant. What you think as a citizen of any country is meaningless. The only thing that matters here is what the agencies of the intelligence community and the government thinks of you. If they don't like what you're doing, you're a threat, you're a target. Makes no difference what you think. I mean, uh, metadata is still data, it's just, it's a higher form of it. It's basically a summary of, of it's really the index. Um, it's the context for the content. But depending on how much metadata you have, that can be quite rich. That is what, uh, that's what the, they, that's the line they try to spiel over our way to, is that it's not really personal data, uh, but in fact uh, it is. I mean, it, it describes you, if it's your phone number, it gives you your home and where you live, and uh, in a reverse lookup, you can do that on the web if you want. Real simple to get the names, not only of you, but all the people that live there, of uh, their ages and relationships, and also the, the home address, and all of that is available by doing that. I find that to be a very hollow argument that metadata doesn't contain personal data because to the extent that it records who communications occur between, what time, when, where, that tells you a lot. If I call an abortion clinic 
or if I call a suicide prevention hotline, or if I call Alcoholics Anonymous, I think people would have a pretty good guess at why I was making that phone call. So I think metadata actually tells you a lot more than content. A lot of content is just garbage. It's really not useful. The metadata can tell you a much more um, in-depth and revealing story about someone's life and someone's inner private life. This is part of the argument. Well, it's just metadata. But even, even the former head of NSA and the CIA, uh, General Michael V. Hayden, said that metadata kills. Well, yeah, if you get enough of it, guess what? But even then, it's not always, is that used as exclusive means? I think in terms of um, parliamentary bodies and Congress in the United States and the Bundestag, I mean, I think you have legislative bodies that are pretty much stalled. They've stalled and they're not going to do anything meaningful. And I think that's where what Edward Snowden has said ha is of particular import because he said, if the laws aren't going to change, tech is going to make the change and technology will make the change. And we see that now because there's a worldwide movement towards people encrypting and people taking matters into their own hands and trying to better to protect their own privacy. So to the extent that legislative bodies, whether it's the Bundestag or Congress or the European Parliament, um, are slow to enact um, surveillance reform or have investigations that are really going nowhere. Um, I think that's where technologists are coming in to fill that void. And I think we all owe a debt to these, these rare individuals who stand up at their extraordinary risk to say, you know what, even if everybody else is, is quiet, even if everybody holds their tongue, not me. I won't be a part of this. I know this is wrong, and I have an obligation to find change. Change starts with me. Change starts with us. Change starts with the community, and change begins with me. Thank you.